Okay, so we're going to get started, and what you're going to be making is an adapted stylus. And so to do this activity, you're going to need a PVC joint, I'm going to show you under the camera here. Hmm. It's back over here. It's down. These, this is what you have to get, and you're going to need your cup and a spoon. So if everybody can get those things in front of them. So we have some boiling water on two sides. We've got boiling water in the back. And yes. You got an extra spoon? So no, do you see any spoons at your tables? That there's an extra spoon? Raise your hand if you see an extra spoon. There's another extra spoon. And there's the third extra spoon. See your hands up in the air? All right, Instamorph, you can do a lot of really awesome things with Instamorph. Instamorph is non-toxic. It's biodegradable, it's reheatable, you can reheat and reshape it up to six times before it starts getting brittle. So it's a fabulous material to work with. It takes about 10 seconds for it to, uh, for the beads to turn clear, to then be moldable. Uh, it takes about five minutes for it to harden, so it's really great. So um, I'll show you, there's tons and tons of different things to know about Instamorph and what you can make with Instamorph. The key is, is that it has to be um, thrown into very hot water. And so you have a spoon. I'm going to show you this particular video so you know what you're making. Then what's going to happen is this side of the room is going to gravitate over here. And Yarda is going to put, put, be pouring boiling water into your cup. And this other side of the room, yeah. So he's going to only be giving you about an eighth of a cup, quarter of a cup, enough to cover up the Instamorph. And then I'm going to be taking your cups over here, and I'll be pouring some hot water. And within five minutes, everybody will have cups with hot water. So I want everybody to take your cups now, and you're going to open up this little plastic bag. And inside this plastic bag, you'll notice that there's a paper clip. I want you to pull the paper clip out, and you have a stylus. We're going to take the stylus out. OK? It's a little stylus. It's a mini one. It's used for, like, with your cell phone for tapping. And this is for people who cannot finger isolate and have a hard time. So the paper clip is going to conduct the electricity from your hand, because when your hand goes around it. And then you're going to pour these little beads into this cup. There you go. Um, I don't know do you, what happened to the audio. Did you turn the audio down? We're not getting any audio. Oh, there we go. There we go. So we're going to watch this. So I pulled the cap off. Secondly, 
So go ahead and put your paper clip around. Should just snap right over the top. One end snaps on easier than the other. So you'll have Instamorph, and those little beads will start to clump together. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm pushing it down. If it's too hot when you scoop it out, count to five. One, two, three, four, five, and then start kneading it. It has to be all clear. It can't be bumpy. So you have to knead it. See how I'm wrapping it around? And then I'm wrapping it around. I stretch it like taffy. You want to put your little pinky in there because you're going to create a phalange. So I've got something to push against. I don't want it to go all the way through to the other end. So your finger in there is going to keep it from pushing through. So paper clip touches the metal on the stylus. Your finger touches the outside of the paper clip a little bit, comes close enough. So when you're shaping it and all of a sudden it starts cooling off, you're like, uh oh, throw it back in hot water and shape it a little bit more. I don't want it to come out. See how it's coming out? That's not good. I want it to be really jammed in there. I want it to hold inside of the T-joint. That's because the water, it wasn't hot enough. See, I'm putting my finger in there. See, I don't want it to go straight. Notice how I'm rotating it? Because that's how I want it. And then I can bend it and shape it to whatever that person needs it to be in. So somebody with contractures. No, it doesn't have to be exposed, but it has to be very close. I mean, if you can have it exposed a little bit. Um, I do find that if there's a thin coating of plastic, it doesn't necessarily, I can still conduct the electricity, but I make it kind of thin, stretch it out. I don't want it to be thick because the plastic might interfere with the conductivity. You can shape that for your individual grip. You can bend it to whatever position. I told you we'd be making stuff with paper clips today. All right. So Yard is going to, you're going to bring your cup up. He's going to pour some hot water in it. You're going to take it back. You've got your spoon to twirl around on it. You can pull it off your spoon after the beads all turn clear. Then you can knead it into one solid color. After you knead it, you're going to stretch it like taffy and start wrapping it. So the other half of the room can come back here with your cups. Okay. So what I want to show you, I want everybody to get their twist ties out. We're going to come back to that little gadget that you made. But I want you to do something a little bit different. So we're going to unbend this. 
We're going to slide this into the T-joint, okay? So now it's sticking out of the T-joint. And then you're going to stick your spoon in there. That's what's cool about these industrial twist ties, because they're rubber and also the T-joint. You can put that spoon wherever. So now you're going to bend it upward a little bit. So you've got that. Are you with me so far? OK. Uh-oh. It crashed. All right. Are you with me so far? So now you don't want to wrap it that way. So what happens is that once this is bent, uh, I've got to go back to camera mode. So now, do you see this bone here and you see this little bone here? Okay. I'm coming across, diagonally across my hand, coming, wrapping it around so it goes up the forearm. And the reason that this is bent up is that's what keeps my hand up from dropping. So somebody with low tone, their hand flops like this. Now this is holds it up. So that's the part is playing around with this wire coming across, right? And so you want it so that you can relax, and this is just going to hold the hand up, right? So this is going across. So put that in your hand. Are you left-handed? Left OK, so if you're left-handed, then it's going to come across like this, the opposite direction. OK, now put your fingers around. No, your hand. Yeah. OK. And then that's going to come off like this. Well, no, she's left-handed. Or you're left-handed, too? So you can, yeah, so just figure out, you can go both ways, okay. figuring out what feels most okay. comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> so you can also put, you know, a close pin in there. You can put a variety of different things inside there. Um, you can also, I found these, like, um, sponge brushes. So I could put Instamorph here and push in a sponge brush. So let's say I, ha I can't hang on to a brush. Now I've got something that would hold the brush right inside my hand. Or with your stylus that you just made, I'm going to show you what else you can do, is we have this universal cuff kit. So I'm going to have you open this up. Pull out the contents here. So the first thing I want you to do, this is your one wrap. I want you to cut off about a two-inch piece off the end, one or two-inch piece. And we're going to put our two-inch D-ring in there. So with our two-inch D-ring, we're just going to attach a D-ring to the end. That's all we do. So that should be pretty simple. So go ahead, everybody stick your D-ring on one end. No, it's just a, 
two inch piece for the D-ring. All right, the next thing you're gonna do is I want you to cut off about a half inch strip. going the long way. And with the hook side facing up, I'll wait till everybody gets, uh, that long strip, that's, you want the horizontal versus the vertical? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you need a long strip because that has to go through your T-joint and it has to attach up here by your D-ring. That's what's going to secure that. Then you're going to cut off, I don't know, about another two inch piece off the end here. And on one end, we're just going to round the corners off. And that 50% is going to be attached to this other end. Oops. So the other end should look like this. All right. All right. So everybody done on that? Nope, you don't have your end in. <laughs> so you can look at that's what your two ends should be looking like. So then, after we've got the two ends, once we then fold this backwards, so I'm taking this, I'm folding this backwards. Look at this, you're gonna slide that through your D-ring with hook side up. And if you don't have hook side up, it's really easy to just fix it so that hook side is up. Okay? And then this is the part that you can wrap around your wrist, right? So it's a way of holding the stylus. Like, let's say the person can't hold the stylus. Or can't hold the paintbrush, or can't hold. It's another way. If you didn't have the industrial twist tie, you can wrap it around the wrist. Oh, you don't have your piece on. Where's your, there it is. OK. There you go. So are you right-handed? OK. All right. So, yours is not, yours is facing that way.
How do you attach the stylus? Yes. So I attach the stylus by sliding that strip of one wrap right down in the middle of the T-joint. And see the D-ring? Got it on this end. Now let's say it doesn't seem to be right, right? You can flip it over this way. So all depends. Left-handed, right-handed, up, down. So mine's a little different because I went sideways. Some of you went straight out. So for me, it made more sense to flip it like this than to put my hand right in there like this, pull back until this tightens. And the part that everybody gets confused about is this part. Notice I have, I'm going backwards. So all eyes on screen, see I'm coming back like that, and underneath my wrist, and then up and over. So it's kind of like a figure eight. And so it's just holding this to the palm of my hand. Now you'll notice you have a one inch D-ring. And the one inch D-ring is to show you that you can make other kinds of things with that one inch. So here's an example of how you can take those materials that you have and make a universal cuff that's one inch wide. You could cut this down the middle. Well, you can make a universal cuff for that for people who experience grasping impairments. So all we're using is Velcro brand one wrap, which is hooked on one side and loop on the other. And we have two one inch pieces that we're going to attach. And one end is our D-ring. And then on the other end, also we've got loop up, hook down. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to take our one wrap for the D end, and we're going to create this tight little pocket. I'm wrapping this up really nice and tight. Now I'm coming back and I'm going to thread right through that D ring. And it's going to go back against itself. We'll adjust that later. But now the palm goes in here. This goes right into the palm. And now we're pulling and pulling and pulling. The more I pull, the tighter it gets onto the palm. And then I flip it back against itself on the back side of the hand. But now watch what I'm going to do with the hand. I'm going to flip my hand upside down and catch this. And then close my pocket. Now my pocket is closed off. Now I'm going to open up my pocket a little bit to put my spoon in there. That's nice and tight. So there we go. I've got a universal cup for a spoon. So that's what else you can do, you know, with your kit. Now, if you notice that with the industrial twist toy, you know how everybody's needs are different. So having something that's bendable, reshapable, to compensate for maybe you know, weakness in their hand where you can bend it way up here. But I want to talk about how do we support the person's arm. So we're going to look at a variety of some different arm troughs. Okay. So here's an example of this was a person that could not bend her head, and she could not raise her arm. And she was an artist. So how do we let her arm rest and keep her head in a neutral posture? So we raise the iPad up. And notice this whole thing with the lock line. Look at where I put the disc. 
I put the disc on the other end of the board. So up here, I'm using a piece of acrylic. But you can use anything that's kind of heavy duty, that's weighted, that doesn't bend. So people have been throwing away shelves, bookcases, because people are getting rid of books and binders and file cabinets. And I look at all these shelving units, all these wooden shelving units, and, and they're heavy duty. I'm like, wow, we could cut those up, right? So then I also looked at MDF board that you can get at Home Depot, and that if you cut that up, that could be maybe um, it, they, it averages about a buck fifty a board. So looking at things that you have in your, your environment to hold as a stand. So and then see the elbow cuff. So we're going to talk about you know these different arm troughs. Here I also want to show something else. About All right. This is an arm trough. And it holds the arm in. It's made out of recycled election signs. This has got foamy on it, and you've got some loose material on the back. Okay? So I want to talk about all the different uses for an arm trough. So when I first created the arm trough, um, I created this little guy here. So the arm trough was a way for someone that if I had an elevated plate, so we raise the plate up using the lock line, and so then it's easier to scoop into your mouth, right? Well, I can add a little cup on the end. So I've got the Velcro board on the end, and I'm going to put it in here. going to pause it a second. So everybody's wheelchair is different. The size tables are different. So that may not be practical. So then I looked at what if I created something out of PVC pipe, right? And instead of putting the arm trough, like making a portable armrest. So I'm going to show this a second here and we'll come back to this video. but. Oh, wouldn't you know it? These tables have lips on them. <laughs> well, not all. These are these are conference tables. So, oh, I did it. I just had to come at it at a different angle. All right. So now that holds that. Now watch. I put an upside down arm trough on top. Now look at this. I've got something to rest my arm on. Right? So just something really simple. And we, what we find is that the armrests on a wheelchair do not come far enough ahead. And or to do forward tasks, you just need a little bit more of that arm support. So this being something really, I got it to fit. How did I do that? Like this on an angle. There we go. <laughs> but wait, that's not all. Because, so I take my arm trough and turn it upside down, then I've got the Velcro. Now I've got this portable armrest that goes on any table, even tables with a lip. <laughs> and now I figured it out. I thought, because sometimes people who experience cerebral palsy, often the arm keeps flopping around, right? So I thought, oh, what if <laughs> I take another arm trough and put it on top? So what if I put two of them together? So that's what I was doing at lunchtime. There we go. I combine the arm trough. Ta-da! So now, take that off. There we go. Got that piece. And then right over the top. There we go. And now I've got something more to support. 
But wait, that's not all. Because I figured out some other things you can do with this arm trough. Oh, oh and that's what's cool about an arm trough, right? And you'll watch and see, I can slide this up and down. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to slide this up and down. So in this case, what if I want it to be steeper and higher? I can do that. I can make it higher. But that's what's really, really cool with this concept. Over here, we have an example of, this is for a student with breath syndrome. Her arms are always up here, and the teacher is like trying to pull down. So we create this arm trough, but look what we added. We added a couple of weights, so we have 16 pounds. So now the student can slide her hand through and see when her arm comes up, the 16 pounds pulls it down and gives her some use and some function. Same thing with tremors or Parkinson's, where you're trying to stop the shaking and yet make it functional. Here's an example of using the arm trough on an adaptive weight, creating an adaptive weight. This is very lightweight, so for somebody with a grasping impairment. And you can see I created a system on how this gets attached to the PVC pipe. So watch the videos in detail on how to make the arm trough as well as the other different um, solutions of uh, increased independence by just providing for our support and making it our trough. All right. Well, then I also saw come about taking that same concept and putting arm troughs on wheelchairs. Oftentimes, people are saying that their hands are falling off, and they just wish they had something that they could just rest their whole arm onto. All right. I want to go back to Instamorph, because I want you to see other things that you can make out of Instamorph. This is a gentleman that works in the maple industry, and he has to put these pieces together, and he only has the use of one hand. So I used Instamorph, created a little jig that he can then put his piece in and snap them together. So that's an example with Instamorph. And Instamorph is so great because you can do all your trial and error with it. Search. Instamorph. So this gives you an idea of I'll make different molds with it. Um, I'll make fidget items, and then when I like the fidget item, like this blue one is very, very relaxing. I really like this a lot. So I can just twirl it, and it's quiet. So when I'm on a plane or I'm having a lot of problems with my Tourette's and I just need something to put in my hand, so that's kind of cool. And, I'm sorry, what? All right, so I was purchasing it on Amazon. And then, like everything, you can just buy everything on Amazon. I then look at, can I get a better deal? So then I contacted the Instamorph company directly, and I'll buy it in um, bulk. I'll buy it like 18 pounds at a time. But you're, you're typically going to buy it in 8 ounces and 16 ounces. And, the, and what you're looking for is a price around a buck ten an ounce. So a 16, I don't know, a buck 10 to a buck 50. So if you get a 16 ounce bag or um, container, you're looking at 20 bucks. So then the Instamorph that you were working with, so you're looking at about a half an ounce of Instamorph. So that project was about maybe 50 cents worth of Instamorph. And, if, and what I like is you can always reuse it, rebend it, reshape it, use it in multiple ways, multiple times. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, it's, it's, um, what is it called? Model magic. I don't use model magic anymore because model magic changed the recipe. Uh, model magic used to dry really fast, but model magic is crumbly. Um, model magic doesn't hold up. So model magic might be fine for playing around with your idea and saying, oh, I'm going to make it out of Instamorph. Now, some people have asked about shoe grue, and I hate shoe grue. It's um, a product that's got a silicone material in it. Hmm. I'm missing my other piece. So, um, yeah, so I really, really um, dislike that because it takes over a day for it to harden. 
Model Magic is now taking over a day to harden. Yes. Yeah. All right. Very good question. So here I have a piece of lock line, and this is just balls and sockets. So you can buy a whole bunch, and then you snap your pieces in. So I snap them like because I've been milking cows in Wisconsin, and I can right, right. Okay, but some of you who have not milked cows or baled hay, okay. So <laughs> what you do is see this little tool here. So this little tool here, if you read up here, it'll say ball end up. That means the ball end has to be facing upward. That snaps in, and then your socket end goes here, and then you go snap them together. All right, then these pieces. These are fixed mounts from modularhose.com, and they've been doing injection molding on them. And I decided, when I found that company, ah, here we go, that I could get Centraboard, which is an expanded PVC, I said, wait a second, what if, you know how I said I don't like nuts and bolts, except for this kind. <laughs> so you can buy this plastic piece from modularhose.com, and then um, you get a, a bolt, and then I double nut it, and I have a lock nut in there, and um, a lock washer. And I can make these for like $2.50 versus $8. And these used to be 12 and now they're down to 8 But I, I use these quite a bit. And then I will put industrial Velcro on the bottom, because industrial Velcro is rated at 12 pounds per square inch, because you have more... Um, a density of aggressive hooks for holding really heavy, heavy items. And you can buy lock line in three-quarter inch, half inch, and quarter inch. You can buy them in different sizes. Yeah. So if you're if you're put if you want to hold something really heavy, heavier objects, you, you want to go with three-quarter inch. If you're only looking at your cell phone, you could get by with quarter inch. So it all depends upon how heavy the object is that you're trying to support. And then I started looking at saying, geez, you know, I could probably combine the two. So an example of that would be, let's go back, come back to albums. All right, here, I want to show you where I looked at how I can get by with just a little bit of lock line material. So, spinning, spinning, spinning. Let's check. All right, so let me just show you this very simple um, iPad. Be See where I've taken lock line and I've inserted it into the PVC pipe. So this is really pretty simple. Um, what we have here is, this is Velcro one wrap. You always need two bases of support. And so you have an elbow here and an elbow here. And then I tapped in a half inch NPT connector, a double, and an elbow here. And then I just, using corrugated plastic, I create this nice little uh, U-mount center board. And you'll notice that this slides right over the top like this, a little square, so it's got the crack, and of course you've got complete flexibility there, so you can stick your iPad in here, and so it becomes just something very simple, pivots out of the way, um, but easy to watch things, easy to do FaceTime, um, but just a nice low-tech uh, iPad mount for the user. All right. But wait, that's not all because you can also use so it for. Is this a really cool, um, this, this uh -oh. little, you know, adjustable iPad mount that can be made in five minutes. But that's not all because I can slide this off, and now I have created a very simple cup holder too. This works great for tapered beverages, so being able to hold your beverage for you too. 
Uh, but wait, that's not all, because I can also add a um, book holder to this as well. So, I'm that before I'm there. Right. Book on there as well, and documents. Mm -hmm. So it's very simple, nice, multi-use um, holder support. So we can mount an iPad onto somebody's scooter with a lock line as well. So you can see I'm using elbows. And that's the other thing I want you to write down, because if you want to invest in lock line, you need to know some other joints that you need to get. You need to make sure that you add a bag of elbows and a bag of doubles, because if you don't put a double on, you have nothing to put your elbow into. So you need at least one bag of doubles, one bag of elbows. And then I'm using half inch NPT connectors that fit inside of three quarter inch PVC pipe. So the video I just showed you, right, that is three quarter inch PVC pipe with half inch lock line pieces. So there's an NPT connector, a double, and an elbow, and then my fixed mount. To that. So yeah, so make sure you get the joints that go with that. I wanted to show you how I connect it um, to the wheelchair. So let me show you how you attach this whole thing to um, any chair. You always want to have two bases of contact. And so what we're using here is just using some um, Velcro one wrap, and so this part. So one of the important p is you need to wrap the whole thing around your tube first. Then you find a place that you can secure it onto the wheelchair. So that's the top part. So we've got that. Now I have to put a section, second piece here, and so I'm going to start off by wrapping around this one time. Then I'm going to thread this right up through the chair. Slip here. Bring this up. And then I'm going to come around here. Pull it really tight. And then come through again. So now this can rotate, but here's what's really cool. If I want to pull it out, do that. I can just pull it out and I can slide this whole thing back down there. And a lot of times we just leave those tubes on and then we can slide pieces in and out. All right. Yeah, you know, it's all trial and error, right? Um, but the other thing that I do, like if somebody's in a supine position or they're in tilt and recline, I would not t attach it to the wheelchair because as soon as the wheelchair goes into recline. So instead, what I do is I attach it to the tabletop and they roll up and get their beverages I don't know, like I'll put the cup holder right along the table so you can roll up that way. So everything's secured onto a side table. Um, this is just this little boy uh, who has arthrogalposis. Okay. Oh, there's my ice cream thing. That's gross. You don't want to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is this, this is uh, the Go Talk Now app. This is a woman who wants to play her music. She's in an assistive living facility and needs just something to hold the iPad up. So that's 
something really simple. I uh, just want to show you other cool things. So uh, a Swiffer duster. Do you know a Swiffer duster can help you to get your shoes on and off? A Swiffer duster, put a phone on the end with a rubber band to secure it. And the Swiffer duster goes click, click, click. But if you're inspecting, if you have a pressure ulcer, um, you can put that on a Swiffer duster. Uh, this is a cherry pitter. Do you know that those cherry pitters work really great for popping pills? Like a lot of times you get, have a hard time getting pills out of blister packs. So that's something simple. Picnic table clamps. If you put a rubber band around a picnic table clamp and then put that rubber band around your cane, now whenever you go to a restaurant or whatever, you can attach that um, cane right to the edge of the table. So it just, it just secures it and that just stays on the cane at all times. So it keeps the canes from falling over. And if I put two picnic table clamps together with U-glue, I can create um, a partition, a holder for corrugated plastic. So if I want to create a privacy screen between two people, I can easily do that with those two picnic table clamps because it's got a spring in it. So I showed that. Um, if you are cooking with one hand, uh, taking lock line and creating a bowl holder. All right, so here's the idea. Is take this and take the lock line, and the bowl can rest right in there. So whatever angle. So now the bowl slides in and slides out. And it's raised above the cake pan. Underneath. And so what we're going to do is we want to keep our elbows in and we can scoop the battery, scoop and then push off. So therefore our elbows are in, we're not putting any stress on our thumbs, so we need a little bit of scoop and push it down. So that's my thought. So I just took spoons and bent them and then those are from old fry pan handles, those rubber fry pan things or pots and pans and then put the spoon in and then used Instamorph to secure it and bent the spoon up. Just looking at things differently. Um, this is for a lever doorknob of how to create a lever doorknob on the fly. All right, so to make this I'm going to attach the bell foam material, which has got the foam rubber just on the bottom here. I want to make sure this is nice and secure around um, the inside part of a doorknob. So I'm going to wrap this around like this and stretch it. And then I'm going to take my one wrap because I want to make sure that the foam rubber material is just very nice and tight so that it's not going to slide off. Alright, there. And then just taking about a, a 14 inch piece of one inch, one wrap. It's actually two inch one wide, wrap. one wrap. And then we lie that right here and wrap this around. And there you've got your doorknob. So this little girl so taking the industrial twist tie and wrapping around the pen. So this is her first time drawing. And then, yeah, she's just so cute. Yeah. All right, I want to go back over to... Flip it. There it is. I want to pick up where I left off. So here she is. Look at that tongue. So she has no movement. She can't bring anything up and saying, look at this. She's got shoulder movement. And we can take that twist tie and figure out what is the best angle so that when she scoops, she can then get it into her mouth for the applesauce. Then taking the industrial twist tie and saying, hey, if I scoop that, if I wrap that around the PVC pipe, so I showed you one of the versions, then I can easily 
hang my iPad on there because I have a little paddle on the back of that track that drops over the industrial twist tie. So see how that just hangs right on there? So that's another way you can put your iPad on there, laying on couch or laying in bed. Well, we made one of those today. These um, fidget spinners. So I looked at the fidget spinners and I wanted to make my own for somebody that only has a use of one hand or somebody who's had a stroke and so coming up with all different ways that I could spin because all this is is this is dual lock and then these are end caps from the hardware store and it just pops in there right so now I've got that for one handed and then I thought wow if I put a couple of them together with the PVC look at that and then I was like, wow, look at this. I bet you I could slide that in for a track. So then I created um, a track system. And so the track that I wanted to show is this, showing what you could do. Hey, check out my spinner board. So I want to talk about this whole evolution of this um, spinner board and how this came to be. And one was, I was at the PT conference and in, uh, down in New Orleans, and you know how you, you get these tchotchkes that you go to these conferences and they have all those tchotchke things and, and I was like, wow, you know, what could I do? with all of this stuff, right? And so I'm thinking, um, at first, it all started off with the fidget spinner. And so I thought, hey, you know these pop sockets are kind of cool. So I thought, hey, I could put a pop socket on there and just slide the pop socket in there. So um, then I was making my own fidget with these winged elbows, because winged elbows slide in, and so I'm like, wow, you know, I can um, put my winged elbow in there. And then the other cool thing is when people see this whole thing that's in there, that's kind of cool. So this I was fascinated with, because you can go like that, and I thought, hey, what if that also slides in here? And this is all just made, this is just tracks. So you see the tracks uh, system here where things slide in. And then if I push down there in the center, it pops out. So that's kind of cool. Then I thought I could take a pop socket here. Again, I'm going to slide that in there. And this is just dual lock. This is low profile dual lock. Then I saw these rings too. It's a competitor of these pop sockets. And I thought, hey, well, you know, I could also slide that in there. And that drops down. And then this is kind of cool. Um, this little thing that they had at the conference. You plug this into your phone and it's a fan, but then I thought, hey, I could drop that right into that ring thing. And then I've got a little spinner there as well. Um, I also looked at what if I don't have these really cool little spinners. I could take corrugated plastic and just put it on a pop socket and stick that in there as well and allow that to spin around. Um, then they were giving out these stress things, and I thought, hey, I could pull that over a pop socket, slide that on there, and twirl this around, and spin that. And then this was another one of those stress things, too, and thought, hey, I could slide that in there, and I'll take that around. And then I thought, hey, Instamorph, I could make something out of Instamorph, and stick that on there. And slide it in and create something that just spin back and forth. Um, so, oh, but this one is is one that doesn't spin, and it was one of those stress things that I thought, hey, I could stick that in a T joint. 
So just having a stationary activity board, you know, this can be really nice um, for anxiety, for Alzheimer's, and um, just something, you know, having a fidget board or a spinner board to do cool things. And you can just be really creative and make your own board. And this again is made out of recycled election signs. And this is just some, I just unfolded. This is a uh, remote too. That's to keep the board from moving around. Assemble it that way. And then that remote, push that in there. Like so. That way it keeps it stuck into place. And then we can stick that on there. So there you have it. Make your own little activity board, center board, and have fun just using giveaways and tchotchkes. And pop sockets. <laughs> yes. So where did you get the blue scarf? Oh. So um, I was one, I, I had gotten up my, a 3D printer. And so I then, I was making my first fidget, I made it out of Instamorph. And I was using it because with Tourette's, when you're, when you're on a plane, the problem with a plane is it's a passive activity. So you're sitting down and for like two hours, and you're just crawling out of your skin because you're going to explode with ticks. So I made one out of Instamorph that I could twirl around. And then I thought, wow, because other people asked me to make it for them. So then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to draw it in SolidWorks, and I'm going to print these. So I started printing these, and then started doing some really kind of cool things with it. So then, um, it takes about 45 minutes to print something like this, and that, it, uh, that's no good. I, it has to be five minutes, right? <laughs> Can't be 45 minutes. So then I thought I got this really good idea. I, what I would do is I would start the printer and then go home, and then come back tomorrow morning, right? Oh, that wasn't a good idea, because I'd come home and there'd be this huge pile of plastic, because it would malfunction during the night or whatever. So you have to babysit these things. Then I came up with the perfect solution. Because every middle school, high school, libraries, and 3D printers have really come down in price. And they want all the middle school kids, all the high school kids, to learn how to do 3D printing. So whenever I need this, I just call up the school saying, I need more. So they have projects for their students, right? And so then they'll print me out. The other thing is, I thought a 3D printer was something I could put on my desk. So I had it on my desk. Well, it has toxic fumes. That plastic, you don't want to be breathing that in. Then I also discovered there's a different plastic. This is PLA, so this is food grade, OK? So then the latest is um, I've been creating silicone molds and making these, which is faster than 3D printing, because I just make a silicone mold, pour the plastic in, in 10 minutes it hardens, and I pop it off, and I can have it that way. And then to do injection molding, to, you have to do 5,000 of these, right? <laughs> or 5,000. So I'm just learning about how to produce more of these, because the, the people they, they, they keep disappearing really fast. People really like these. So it's a nice fidget item. But wait, this is even better. So take two pop sockets. So pop sockets, when we first got it, my daughter had gotten one. And I was like, what is that? You know? So she's like, see it, telescopes? And like, I'm like, wow. She said, they're really expensive, mom. They're 10 bucks. I don't know, forget it. I'm not going to pay 10 bucks for this. So I went to Alibaba, right? So 34 cents a piece. So I can get them for 34 cents a piece. And when I peel these both off and I stick them together, this is what I get. Oh, I get the ultimate fidget toy, right? So this is really relaxing. And I like the sensory. I like, it's like, sounds like a deck of cards, right? right? And then um, I put a couple of them together and I roll them down at the table. They're really kind. I'm sorry, I'm going to get really obsessed with this. but. So that's, yeah, pop sockets. <laughs> I know, new fidget. And the other thing is it's about sensory, too, because it's so smooth there. Again, we get to that satin blanket, the satin ribbon on the blanket. So having something that's soft, smooth to rub your hand against, I, don't know. I could go on and on. Same thing on the inside here is smooth. So it's, it's all about textures and sensitivity and sensory 
input in all of that. All right. Oh, speaking of sensory input. So, so you saw the track things. I thought, what if I put acrylic on top? Right? I could make a marble thing game with it. Buckshot, that TSA really likes to know why I'm carrying bullets in my suitcase. <laughs> so Remo 1 in a big roll. So here I am putting it on both sides. All right. So I've got the permanent on one side. But this is like just about perfect in 9 by 12. But notice how this is all really rough. So what I have to do. This is how we deburr acrylic. So this is a standard 9 by 12 sheet of acrylic that I can get at the store. So you're rounding the edges to make sure that they're nice and And it removes a thin layer of acrylic. And now these corners. So you can see the pieces. So look at how I'm taking my scissors with acrylic and I'm knocking off those sharp corners because I don't like anything sharp. I want everything to be rounded. Now I have, my, I have my Remo 1 pieces. So I have to remember that I want print side down. I want white side up on the corrugated plastic. And notice how I cut last. I don't do any measuring. Um, I just trim off the pieces at the end. So it's not lifting off. Okay, you flip it. Now, flicking it. Perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and have one right this side. Then in the center, again, I'm taking the side of my thumb and I'm flicking. So when I flick it, it comes up. So now it tells me where do I cut. So I'm going to cut it right there. That way I don't have to measure. It's all corrugated plastic. Oh, I did a chocolate box puzzle with it. So I put the partitions in between. And then a Lynn's Chocolate was selling these little boxes that you, and I thought, oh, I could make a puzzle box with that. And so I was sticking those in, and I was showing people how to make a, a puzzle with it. And then I thought, oh, I got another idea. All right, so now I can go ahead and remove the other backing. I'll trim that later. But I'm going to take my piece of acrylic. Uh, before I do that, I want to now you can get these BBs in lead, stainless steel, you get the, the ones from, like for BB guns. But they're really heavy, and so having that heavy. Now I'm going to put this on top. And there's was it like the ocean drums and the rain drums and all of that. So it's a nice fast way of 
something with vibration and sensory input. All right. I want to go back to some really cool stuff. So that's showing that particular tray, showed that, that. Oh, that's what I was, I was showing that. Then for 4th of July, I made it into like a little flag there, a little activity with the flag going. So that was fun. Then this is a dog treat dispenser. Everybody asks me, what's the hardest thing I ever had to come up with? And that is this dog treat dispenser. So it's using corner guard. And you push the treat down. And here's the Instamorph. And so then the dog just comes up. And when you give dog treats, they're supposed to be administered at knee high. You're not supposed to throw it on the ground. Um, so that was something simple with corner guard and then the mouse stick. Here's my arm troughs for a wheelchair that I've got secured. Showed you that one. Showed you the rake. Showed you that. See, that's what it looks like underneath. Really simple with just PVC joints. Then this one is just showing with having both, having two on both sides. And even for like when you're at a keyboard and to raise your arms and relax your shoulders, because the armrests on a chair don't come far enough. Internet. Well, you got the idea. Moving right along. There we go. So now I'm able to rest both hands, brings it up. And if I have a trackball, right? So I can put a trackball there. Now I've got a nice neutral wrist posture. This is my latest invention. Check this out. Are you tired of the seatbelt kicking you in the neck all the time or giving you seatbelt burns? I hate seatbelt burns, you know? Take a piece of Velcro brand one rack and with the hook facing upward, overlap it with my zipper loop. So the loop on one side, rubber on the other side, attach it right here. Then take your seat belt and wrap this around, just like so. And now look at this, he slides up and down. The rubber material grips onto your shirt. So it provides non-slip. And I can drive safely and no more seat belt burns across my neck. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, that's my million dollar idea. <laughs> yes. No, it because it slides. Yeah. So that's what's great. So when you get out, you you leave it on the seatbelt. Right. Yeah, and you don't ever take it off your seatbelt, because then sometimes you want to have it up here. Sometimes you want to pull it down here, and your clothing might be different too. So that's what's kind of cool is you just slide it up and down. Here's a simple way of using the dual lock material to attach the disc to the windshield and now having a track with corner guard that you can put your cell phone in. So a nice simple, like if you're using your cell phone for GPS. And then this gentleman has ALS and it's kind of hard to see. Um, I've got one disc attached to the side up there. He wants to be able to use his cell phone independently. Oh, that means it's 2 o'clock and it says drink water. Did you see that? Did that come up? Oh no, that comes up on here. <laughs> Is it really 2 o'clock? All right, so we're going to look at this. This last one we're going to take a break and then we'll come back. But so my daughter had knee surgery and they brought her back to her room after surgery. And they had this overbed tray with this hole in it, and they had this blue thing in there. I never seen anything like it. I'm like, what is that? So the nurse came in. I said, what is that blue thing for? And the nurse said, well, I actually saw something else. But the nurse said, 
she said, oh, that's in case they get sick because of anesthesia and all of that. That's the thing that you're supposed to get sick into. And I was like, oh, OK. So me, seeing things always upside down, right? I saw it like this, right? Now, does anybody know what that looks like? Right? Doesn't that look like Marge? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, that's Marge's hair, right? So, you know, upside down, right? All right. Yes. Did somebody have a question? Okay. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to take about five, ten minute, minute break, a little bathroom break, water break, and then everybody back, and then we're in our last hour. No more yawning. <laughs>